Having sat in a secure compound for almost six years, 16 historic flying archers have been restored to their original position above the railway at Chorley in Lancashire during a six-week blockade of the line. The closure was driven by the need to rebuild or modify several structures for the £400 million North West Electrification Programme. The archers, which are Grade 2 listed, date back to the early 1840s when the Bolton and Preston Railway was being constructed. The route passed through a ridge to the north of Chorley where ground conditions were unstable. Excavations for a cutting revealed large quantities of clay which split from top to bottom when exposed to the weather. Concerned by that expansion, engineer Alexander Aidy built the arches to generate side thrust which would resist any lateral movement of the cutting's retaining walls. They were replaced with temporary steel struts in 2008 as part of a project to resolve problems with the track formation. Their reinstatement during the blockade was a requirement of the list of building consent. I've got to say this is, this is a great day. Here we are, English heritage, when they said, we want the flying arches back, I was fully supportive of that. And today, Network Rail has kept that promise and we've seen them unveiled to our public gaze. I think it's fantastic. The other thing is, this is unique. There is nothing like this anywhere else in the rail network. So I've got to say, it's a privilege to see them back in the rightful position. And what, what, what is good, isn't it? Here we are, we see the new underneath and then we see the original heritage being placed on top of the steel arch. The main focus of the blockade was actually 200 yards further south in Chorley Tunnel, where the tracks had to be lowered by almost 500 millimetres to accommodate overhead line equipment. This involved cutting notches in the tunnel's brick invert to make space for precast concrete ladder beams to which the tracks were later fixed. With a high water table locally, it was clear before work started that managing the expected water ingress would prove critical so sheet piles were sunk alongside the tracks in the southern approach cutting, effectively acting as cofferdams. The significant pumping operation was also established. Over six weeks, the blockade saw a huge amount of work delivered. I believe that's, that's the real key success of the project. Not only have we installed the track slab, um, flying arches, um, we've had one earthwork scheme, which is just to the south of the tunnel. We've had um, four bridge reconstructions, um, one aqueduct reconstruction, and we've also undertook three track renewals which are undertaken by a different project, but we've absolutely maximised as much as we can do within a blockade. And there are more challenges ahead, including the enlargement of one of Farnworth Tunnel's twin bores, whilst trains continue to use the other. December 2016 should mark the end of the North West's current electrification programme.